Hello, seventh graders. Thanks for checking out this video tutorial. Today, we're going to talk about compound events in section four. Our learning target is I can use tree diagrams, tables, or a formula. We're going to use all three of these today to find the number of possible outcomes. Starting with a little bit of vocabulary today. <clears throat> it says the set of all possible outcomes of one or more events is called the, that would be sample space. <clears throat> you can use tables and tree diagrams to find the sample space. So the set of all possible outcomes of one or more event. All right, let's, let's look at one here. I'm going to move this just temporarily <clears throat> to give myself a little bit more room and then I'll move it back. All right, it says, for example, one, finding a sample space, you randomly choose a crust and style of pizza. So you can do thin crust or you can do stuffed. And oh, then you have these different styles to choose from, Hawaiian, Mexican, pepperoni, or veggie. Wants us to find the sample space and how many different pizzas are possible. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to use a tree diagram. And that's, we talked about, that's one of the ways uh, for our learning target that it wants us to use. Okay. So um, first I'm going to start off with my crust. I have different types of crust that I can get. Uh, then I have different styles of pizza. And then I'll have my outcome. So these two put together. Okay. So I could have a thin crust. I'm just going to put T. And then I could have Hawaiian with that. Or I could have thin crust and Mexican style. Or I could have thin crust and pepperoni. Or I could have a thin crust veggie. Okay. So the outcome then would be like thin and Hawaiian or thin and Mexican or thin and pepperoni or thin and veggie. I'm just putting these together okay, so you can kind of see how that works. <clears throat> or I could get a stuffed crust and get all the same styles. So I could get Hawaiian. I could get stuffed crust Mexican, I could get stuffed crust pepperoni, or I could get stuffed crust veggie. And the same would work for the outcome. Stuffed crust Hawaiian, stuffed crust Mexican, stuffed crust pepperoni, or stuffed crust veggie. Okay, so it says, find the sample space of that. Okay, well, how many different outcomes are there? There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there are uh, eight different pizzas possible. Okay, and that's, this is using a, a tree diagram to, to model that. Okay, that's what they mean when they say a tree diagram. All right, pause to try the on your own. All right, the, now for the on your own, it says, what if the pizza shop adds a deep dish crust? So now we're going to have a thin, we're going to have a stuffed, and we're also going to have a deep dish. Okay, find the sample space. Well, now I just add a crust, and I still have those four styles available of Hawaiian, Mexican, pepperoni, and veggie. So essentially, I just added... Uh, four pizzas to my original outcome, so I'll have uh, 12 different pizzas possible. Okay, you add one more crust, so you can do one more style with, with each crust that you add. All right. Uh, let me move this back up. Just to get this. Okay, for the next vocab section, it says another way to find the total number of possible outcomes is to use the fundamental
counting principle. And that's that's right here in our key idea. Okay. So the fundamental counting principle, um, it says an event M has M possible outcomes. An event N has N possible outcomes. The total number of outcomes of event M followed by event N is M times N. Okay, so what's that's, what that's saying is <clears throat> this is kind of like a formula that you can use rather than making this tree diagram to find like a sample space or a total number of outcomes. Okay, so <clears throat> here in example two, um, I'll kind of show you that. It says, find the total number of possible outcomes of rolling a number cube and flipping a coin. Okay. Method one shows you that you can use a table. So it says, let H equal heads and T equal tails. Okay. If I were to roll a number, die, um, a number cube, I could get one. I could get a two. I could get a three. I could get a, right? That's what these represent. And if I were to flip a coin, I could get a heads or tails. So these are showing the different possible outcomes. I could roll a one and get a head. I could uh, roll a one and flip a tail. I could roll a two and flip a head, or I could roll a two and flip tails. So, you know, on and on and on and on, so on and so forth. This is one way for you uh, to find the total number of possible outcomes is by making a table, okay? Uh, when you make a table this way, it's very similar to what you would do if you used uh, the, the tree diagram like we did up here. Or uh, for method two, the other way that you can do it is just what we talked about in that key idea. So method two, uh, use the fundamental counting principle. <clears throat> and what that says to do is to identify the number of possible outcomes of each event. So possible outcomes of each event. Okay. So how many different possible outcomes are there for my first event of rolling a number cube? Well, you could get a one, a two, a three, a four, a five, or a six. So there's six different outcomes for event one, there are six different outcomes. For event two, uh, that's kind of messy. I'm just going to rewrite that. Event one, you could roll six different numbers. Uh, event number two, we have a coin, or in this case, we have a quarter. And flipping a quarter has how many outcomes? Two outcomes, either heads or tails, right? So the fundamental counting principle says you need to multiply those events. So all we need to do is take six times two to get us 12. So that means the total number of possible outcomes is 12 different outcomes. And you see that in your table here. Here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. They match up. You can roll a five and get tails. You could roll a three and and flip a heads. You could roll a one and flip tails. Right? There's all these are the all the different possible outcomes. Um, this one students tend to like to use because it takes less time. So you can use a table. You can use the fundamental counting principle, or you can use this tree diagram. All are options when you're finding the a total number of possible outcomes. Okay, so similar for example three, find the total number of possible outcomes. How many different outfits can you make from the t-shirts and the jeans and the shoes? Okay, so t-shirts, how many t-shirts are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Looks like there are seven different t-shirts. Uh, jeans, one, two, three, four. There's four different pair of jeans and shoes. One, two, there's three different pair of shoes. 
So I'm just going to use the fundamental counting principle and say, well, seven possible outcomes for t-shirts times four for jeans times three for shoes. If I multiply those together, that gives me 84 different outfits. Some people in here are probably thinking, wow, that's awesome. Not me. I'm good with a couple outfits, but 84 different ones. Now, <laughs> if you wanted to, could you make a table of all that? Absolutely. But boy, I don't know if I want to make a table with 84 different cells in it. So um, I'm just going to use the fundamental counting principle. Okay. Why don't you pause here to try the on your own for two and three. All right. Total number of possible outcomes of spinning the spinner. So it has one, two, three, four outcomes times choosing a number one to five. That would be five outcomes. So four times five is 20 possible outcomes <clears throat> for number two. For number three, how many outfits can you make from four t-shirts, five jeans, and five shoes? Five times five is 25 times four is a hundred different outcomes, hundred different outfits. All right, so so everything up until now has been total number of uh, possible outcomes. Next, we're gonna talk about a compound event. And a compound event has two or more events. As with a single event, the probability of a compound event is the ratio of the number of favorable outcomes to the number of possible. So very similar to before when we talked about probability. So the probability of an event is the, that ratio. It's the number of favorable over the number of possible. Okay, And we just looked at how to quickly find the number of possible outcomes. Okay, So now we're going to use this piece of information to find the probability of a compound event that has, and that's where we have two or more events. <clears throat> okay, number four, example four says, in example two, what is the probability of rolling a number greater than four and flipping tails? Okay, so again, think about this, the probability of a favorable outcome over the number of possible outcomes. Okay. Well, thankfully for us, we already found the number of possible outcomes in example two, right? I think it was, I think it was 12. Let's go back up just a second. Yeah, that was rolling that number cube and the total and flipping the coin and the total was 12 possible outcomes. So we're gonna use that piece of information. So now we're looking at the probability of rolling a number greater than four. So probability of number, I'm just gonna put the up arrow, greater than four. <clears throat> and, oops, and what else is it? Uh, flipping tails. So we're looking at the probability of rolling a number greater than four and flipping tails. All right, what is, we, we know the number of possible outcomes. We took um, our six times two, because there are six numbers on the number cube, and you can flip either heads or tails to get 12 possible outcomes. Um, but what are the number of, of, of favorable outcomes? Okay, How many of them are are favorable. Well, we need a number greater than four. So we need a number greater than four, so that's five and six, and we want them to be tails. And so if we look up here in example two, greater than four, so five and six and tails. So we're looking at five T and six T. What's the probability of that happening? Well, 
there are two favorable outcomes. Okay, get a five, roll a five and flip a tails or roll a six and flip a tails. All right, that simplifies to one out of six odds. Or remember, you could always change that to a percent. One divided by six is 16.66 repeating or 16 and two thirds <clears throat> percent. Okay, so is it very good odds? No, your probability isn't high. It's, it's, it's unlike, not very likely, but it could happen, right? Could happen. Okay, uh, last one here. It says you flip three nickels. What's the probability of flipping two heads and one tail? Okay, so very similar to the um, other one where we're looking at the probability of two heads and one tail. All right. We need the number of favorable outcomes and the number of possible outcomes. So let's do possible outcomes first. How do we find the number of, of possible outcomes. How did we do it in our <clears throat> previous examples? Okay. Let take a look, take a second to think about that. And then also think about what goes on top here is the number of favorable outcomes. Okay. So, um, if we take, and, and this, is, this is one way to think about it. Remember, if you wanted to do like a tree diagram, you could do that too. And I, I might end up doing that here just to kind of show you both ways. So, what, how many favorable outcomes do we have? Oh, we're looking for two heads and one tail. So, that's, that's a total of three favorable outcomes. And what's the possible... Um, number of possible outcomes. Well, if you didn't figure that out yet, that's okay. Let me show you a, how I would map this out if I were to use a, a tree diagram. Let me give myself a little bit more space. Okay, so <clears throat> let's say I have on my first flip, I could get uh, a heads or a tails. Okay, if I were to flip this again, this coin again, I could get a heads or a tails. Or if on my first flip I got a tails, my next flip I could get a heads or a tails again. All right, so this is <clears throat> uh, if I flip three nickels. So flip one, second one, third one. Okay. And then I could, my third flip, this one I could get a heads or a tails. This one I could get a heads or a tails. Here I could get a heads or a tails. And similar, heads or tails. Okay. <clears throat> what happens here? Well, let's take a look. I could get, on my flips, I could get three heads. So I could get three heads. I could get heads, heads, tails. I could get heads, and now I, I did all these, tails, heads, or heads, tails, tails. Okay, so that takes care of these ones. Now I just have my bottom ones, <clears throat> okay. I could get tails, heads, heads. I could get tails, heads, tails. Probably going crazy thinking about this now. <laughs> tails, tails, heads. Tails, tails, tails. So how many different 
possibilities or outcomes could I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different possibilities. Three out of eight. Now, <clears throat> let's take a look. It wants to know probability of two heads and one tails. Where does that happen? Where do I get two heads and one tails? Well, here, two heads and one tail. Here I have two heads and one tail. Here I have two heads and one tail. So there are the three out of the total of eight. And three out of eight, you can leave it as that for probability, or you can divide, you can say it's 37.5%, your probability of flipping two heads and one tail. Okay. So <clears throat> that does it for the examples. Please pause now to try four, five, six, and seven on your Okay, I'll give you the answers here. Uh, for number four, you should get one third or 33 and one third percent. Number five, half or 50%. <clears throat> number six, you roll two number cubes. What's the probability of rolling double threes? One out of 36 or about Two and seven ninths percent. Not a very good percent, two percent odds there. Uh, and number seven, probability of choosing stuffed crust Hawaiian pizza, one out of eight or about 12.5%. Let me know if you have questions on any of these and I will be happy to go over them with you. Uh, that does it for comp Pound events, dealing with probability and statistics. Thanks for checking this out. I'll see you guys next time.